Welcome everyone to the post game lobby where Vedius Wonder Senkux and I are here to look back at week five in the summer split and to look ahead towards the big NA versus EU fight in Rift Rivals. And it's been quite an interesting week of cross group play. Thank you for joining us as well, Vedius. My pleasure. Uh, you recently just casted Unicorns of Love versus NIP. Yes. You must be a bit tired because it was quite intense. It was quite a hectic game. Very pleased with how NIP have done, what they've shown, their growth. But also, I feel like Unicorns of Love have demonstrated that even in a deficit, they do find ways of coming back into the game. Yeah, take a look at some of the plays from that final series of the week. Ninjas in Pajamas kept with a great performance, but it wasn't enough in the end. The Unicorns of Love managed to secure the win. And Wonder, you were talking throughout this series about the fact that NIP might have been a bit underestimated and has more strengths that we, than we had anticipated. Yeah, I think like NIP throughout the series, especially Shook and Spartle, they really snowballed uh, the early games. And I think Spratl as well in the last game, he had some really insane hooks and he really made a lot of picks together with Shuk in, in the first and second game as well. So I think like the early game was really good, but then they like their team fights, their positioning, just their macro decisions overall are just not on par. So I think like that's that's what they showed today. And even though they had might made some like slight progression, then it was not enough to take down Unicorns. But you, Senko, do you see progression? Because in the beginning, they weren't able to put really anything on the map except for some plays early. Now they managed to win a game and put up a fight versus the Unicorns. Do you see any progression there? I'm not sure if I see the biggest progression because the problem is that actually every single game, they've actually won the early game pretty much. So the progression is not kind of there for the late game. It was there in the first game, but I feel like they, they kind of got away with it because they had a really Late, like late scaling com, but in general their early game has been much more uh, like stompy, if mm -hmm. that could be a word. Yeah. And uh, I think that also kind of happens because of the jungle matchup. Like Xerxes is more of a farming kind of guy in the jungle, and Shug is more has always been more the kind of early impact style. And I just felt like the laners didn't really respect it that much and got punished way too hard, of, and that's why they kind of kind of meshes versus UL's early game, but they just didn't really know how to end the game. And then Unicorns of Love is a team that, of course, when they get the advantage, are able to end. And the uh, Samux player of the series, we did have a chance to speak to Sheepy after the game. Dracos did, and he brought up a topic that has been very widely discussed amongst us and um, us as well. Sankux, he said about Exile, we see him making a lot of mistakes, and that's something we criticize him for very hard. And he said, well, if a player makes an individual mistake, it's actually also a team mistake because they might have not have called miss. They might not have said that he had to be back. And as from a coach's perspective, that's understandable. Can you? understand why he wants to give that spin to it and is it just fine i mean i kind of agree with him we were bashing a bit too much in exile when i was here last week as well versus g2 and even when we were playing ul i didn't feel like he was the main factor of why they were actually losing i i think in general it's really hard for us who watches the game to know what happens inside the comms and especially on these kind of team plays it's hard it's hard to say who actually makes the mistake and this is an obvious mechanical mistake but i think exile has made a, quite a lot of solo mistakes that doesn't really revolve around the team but I would say that maybe we bashed too, a bit too much at him and maybe it was I mean I can agree with him a lot of the deaths were also kind of gangs so if that's not called out probably by the team then I can understand I understand the position our analysts are in you have to make a snap judgment yeah I mean like sure there's things that we don't understand and I think that everyone needs to understand that we're basing our opinions based off what we see but we don't get to see everything. And there's always another layer that, that will always um, be kept within the team. And sure, from a team perspective, there are definitely things that they could do to help Exile. But there are also many things that I feel that he is an individual just either doesn't respect or he doesn't take into consideration. Those are personal development things that he needs to work on if he wants to be challenging the best mid laners in the world. Yeah, Sheepy was also kind of saying that indeed, but while well, you look at a team at the Unicorns of Love and they're still winning, they only lost yeah. the Splice and we're being a bit harsh on them because we want to see them rise above. And then I see a game like this, I wonder where Fishichachi does a couple of things, three, four things where you're like, why would you do that? So why does he get more credit kind of than an exile? Uh, I mean, Honestly, like he's performing more consistently than Exile. Like judging from these games, he didn't really play very well. Like, but I think in general he plays good in lane. But he he is greedy at times, and it was really well punished this game. And in our series against them, for example, we played a lot of scaling junglers, junglers that doesn't really punish a lot of lanes. So he kind of got away with it, even though he he didn't really because we called him off guard in the side lane later later in the game. Mm -hmm. But I think. Like he, he's a solid player and he's definitely not the 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 fault of losing the game. So 
Yeah, it's quite interesting when you look at a team. Obviously, there's always needs to be a scapegoat, kind of. But uh, let's see what the scapegoat was in our other series that we want to highlight. Earlier this week, Fnatic, they continued their strong form as they Oops. took down Splice in a 2-0 sweep. All right, Sankooks, who was the scapegoat? Who messed up? Um, it was a team effort. <laughs> <laughs> it was a team effort. Um, yeah, what well, was kind of the general takeaway for you guys of how, why that series went the way it did? I think, especially in the first game, I feel like we had really strong lanes and got a really good early start to the game, but I just didn't feel like we pulled the trigger. We didn't really do anything. We just kind of waited and it really showed in the next, or oh, the game we're watching here, like the last game of the, so of the series. So slow. It was a really slow game and I feel like we could have done a lot more and we kind of, we didn't, I didn't feel like we it wasn't the spice that I know from when we usually play scrims, we were playing way too far back and we weren't, we were respecting a bit too much, we weren't just going in when we knew we can and that was the main reason we lost the first game and the next game it was, I mean we still played slow, we had a bit more to forgive for it because we had Cassidy in, uh, in a way, but it's still, it was kind of a bit disappointing series of all I think. And I, I'm curious because what we saw, in my opinion today, was that the Unicorns of Love seemed to have an early game where there's not much presence. Whereas when you compare that to Fnatic, like Brox is the type of jungler that's always trying to exert his pressure all across the map. And I just wonder as a team that recently went up against Fnatic, do you guys feel that you need to be able to match Fnatic pound for pound in the early game to be able to hold their own? Or do you think you can afford to run those kind of scaling kind of comps? I mean, I think we were one of the teams where when we played against Fnatic, we kind of like, we didn't play their style. We didn't fall into the early game. We didn't let them snowball on us. Uh, we played like really slow games and that's probably like the first time Fnatic played the slow games as well. But I think like we were just, in, when we, we approached the mid game, we got caught a bit too much and our engage our engages were really bad. Like we, we tried to go at the wrong times and we didn't go when we should do. And I think like just in general, they played really solid in the later parts of the game too. So it's not only an early game team that has to snowball early and they also play really good on like fuck of all, like they go into where we don't see them and then we have to respect on all sides of the map. So I think they're pretty good. So at the way to late. take them down is to kind of slow them down early? I mean, I think you can play any style against them. You just have to, we just have to bring our A game and then we can beat them. But like, they're still a really good team and I consider them the best in Europe. So I think it's, it's a tough deal to take them down. That is true. If you look at the standings, that is also reflected there. Fnatic, best team in the league right now, possibly. They are definitely number one by a margin in Group A. And then H2K and the Unicorns of Love in uh, Group B. H2K got a 2-0 over Misfits on Friday. So that's kind of a blow to that team. And G2 had a 2-0 win over the Mysterious Monkeys as well. And those are two series that I kind of want to highlight because the Misfits, kind of shockingly this week in Ferius, gave up a huge lead to H2K two times in a row. And we're seeing a bit of regression, maybe. Is that correct? Well, I, it's... It's difficult to say, right, because what we saw from Misfits was their inability to properly close out a game. And I wonder whether or not that's just them playing a little bit too reserved or whether or not that was H2K properly being able to set up an adequate defense that made it difficult for Misfits to properly use that lead, right? So uh, without properly like delving deep into it and looking into it, it's difficult to say. But what you can say is that both teams are definitely leveling up. And I feel like that H2K have definitely like H2K are just a weird team. It feels right? like a because, coin flip, yeah, right? Because every time people lose faith in H2K, they always come out and they have a really impressive performance. But then when people have a lot of hype behind them, they tend to just kind of crash and burn. So uh, they're a little bit of a volatile team and I really just want to see some consistency out of them. Whereas for Misfits, I feel like that they are still a relatively new team and communication is still something that they are developing. So I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and within the next two weeks, once we reach the second half of the split, that's where I no longer have any benefit of the doubt for you and that's where you really need to start making that playoff run and that uh talk about benefit of the doubt and we'll see them bounce back that's what we said of g2 for weeks now and they did today they had a 2-0 and victory over the mysterious monkeys but it was scrappy and after that series missy tweeted the monkeys played very well and i didn't feel in control of the games they always looked for ways to pressure i think they could be a top team you guys had to giggle when you saw that tweet uh so do you agree that this is just the innate potential in the Mysterious Monkeys, or is it also still to be expected from a G2 that isn't on form, Sankux? Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with them being a top team. I think they're way stronger than they were without Kigis and Amazing, like way, way stronger. And their macro play seems a lot better. I just think still that today Koski got kind of smashed by perks and their bot lane didn't do so well either. So I feel like it's kind of the same problems. I'm not sure if I would call them a top team in terms of General macro play, it seems like way better and they could probably call it a top team. I just don't feel like they have the players for it. Hmm. Wonder? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's like with Kiki is amazing. They have like this this lane to play around, and they have this um, synergy built in from the other teams they were playing on. But I still think like the mid laner is is not like he's feeding some games. If we manage to like play around mid and shut him down, then he feels like really uncomfortable, and he he does a lot of mistakes. And the same for their bot lane. They're not really doing anything proactive. They're just farming for late, playing the Twitch and seeing if they, he can pop off late game or something like that. But I don't think if they play it, like, they really have to put a lot of work in. And uh, I don't think it's, I think it's too early to split, honestly, for them to be a top team. And they probably just have to look at how they can improve fast as, as fast as possible. Yeah, and when they can improve. And for Mithy, obviously, we're not in that game, so we can't know. Maybe Mithy did feel pressured. I believe uh, he also said that lane was very hard to play against and stuff like that in lane. So we will never know. How much potential do you see for this lineup? Potential? Um, I do not think that they'll be able to overtake Splice. Yeah. But I do think that they have the potential to overtake Vitality. Which would be... I think a success for them. Yes, it would be a massive success for them given how they started off on the split. And I think that that will be an exciting match once the within group play starts happening again. And I think that with the uh, plays that we have been seeing from Mysterious Monkeys, they should be happy with the fact that they took down NIP, so they got a win on the board. And they, well, according to G2, they challenged G2, right? So that should be a confidence booster and they should just grow upon that. They should continue to try and develop. And I do agree with the sentiments that they made, like, Koski in particular for me is someone that needs to chill out. Like he's <laughs> he's a little bit too emotional at times. I feel like he tries too hard to make plays. And I feel like that just establishing establishing yourself more a little bit on the meta picks and just being a little bit more standard and reserved when playing a lane would go uh, a, a long way in order to contribute to the success of Kikis and Amazing who already have that built-in synergy. And on the other side of the rift, how strong is G2? That is the big question. And Next Wednesday, the top teams in North America and Europe, they start their fight for regional glory at Rift Rivals. And G2 will be contending there as well as Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love from the side of EU. And then we have TSM, Phoenix One and C9 from the side of NA. And I asked you guys to weigh in on the best players in each role across the two regions. And we're going to start with Vedius, your EU slash NA uh, OP5. I am curious. Where is it? All right, hey. so there's a Chachi top, Broxa, Bjorks, and Reckless Jesses. Well, first up, only one EU oh. na um, a NA name, which it is an EU name, so it I can't. It is an EU name, but <laughs> Bjorks is. is a resident from North America. Yes. And I just want to start off by saying that a lot of this is based off what I watched from C9 versus TSM and from watching P1 last night. So it's pretty based on their recent performances as well. And I think that. Starting with the top lane, Vizichachi, I think that going back to what Wanda said, he's consistent. While he definitely makes some bad plays here and there, for the most part, he is the most consistent top laner in Europe for the most part. Maybe aside from Wanda, of course. But we're talking about just Rift Rivals right now yes. for the time being. So uh, when I look at Haunter, when I look at uh, Impact and Ray and how they're constantly being switched out, uh, and when I also look at Zig, these three guys from North America, they just seem to be so variable in their performances. One game they're snowballing, the next they're getting smashed. And I feel like that even when we look at the top laners from EU, like Vizichachi just seems to be the most consistent and staple out of the three, which is why he's in that pick. Broxa, um, I feel is by far the strongest jungler in Europe. Super very solid, very well-rounded player. Bjergsen, this guy is just extremely good, extremely experienced, and he is a big part as to why I think Tearsome will be a massive threat uh, coming into Rift Rivals. And on the bottom lane, that shouldn't really be a surprise. I well, think that Reckless and Jez is by far and away outclass every opposition that will be uh, achieving at this uh, tournament. Wow, that that's a big one for me. Jez is, uh, and Reckless together are stronger than anything or the individual components of any team. That is, a, is there anything that you guys vehemently un uh, no, un -agree, disagree, disagree with, I wonder? I mean, I didn't keep in mind like synergies and stuff like that when I picked my All-Star team. I just took like player for player. But um, I think like, while I agree that Vishichachi, I said like he was solid and he's like um, good mechanically all the, like every game, I still think that he makes these mistakes where he can really cost his team like this one game, which matters would matter a lot in like an All-Star or uh, like th this, this, this top uh, five team, yeah. If we look at those picks together, we see some differences. Um, impact there in the top lane, which I was speaking to Azale a little bit, asking for his opinion. I just gave him roughly you guys' picks, and he was quite surprised that Impact was your number one just because he feels like Impact hasn't been doing well in NALCS so far. So then the question is, do you not rate Soas or Vizichachi then higher than him? Honestly, I don't watch. It's not or like I watch NA a lot, yeah. but I've watched like the recent games, and I think. 
and from playing against Impact as well at Worlds, like I know this is a long time ago and a lot <laughs> can happen since then, but he was always a really solid player and he always like played like really smart in a way where he would never get super smashed or anything and he would always like play well with his team and coordinate with his team. So I think he's a really solid guy and uh, Jensen in the mid lane, he's like, um, I think like from watching against Bergson, he had the upper hand and I think like the two mid laners there are probably I would say they they probably match like caps or something like mm -hmm. that in Europe, and I just I just wanted some variety as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's overlap Sankux's picks there because he you guys made this independently from each other, but I feel like uh, it's quite similar. We're gonna take a look in just a second. You did didn't talk I to swear each other we didn't, about it. We no, didn't you didn't. And the only thing you added was Impact slash Ray, so I feel like you also didn't really know. So we just put them both there. I actually <laughs> mainly took it from from last night's game versus yeah. TSM and. I feel like both ga or all games they were kind of outclassing top lane. It seemed like very recent so, results. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. recent results. And for the jungle, I have Proxy because I just think he's been performing way better than many other junglers in the EU right now. And I don't really see any of the three junglers from NA having as much impact as him. Um, and for mid lane, it was about it was in between three lanes: Bjergsen, Jensen, and Caps. But. Nuke Duck wasn't able to be picked, so yeah, yeah. you can put yeah. that in. That would be an obvious pick. Yeah. <laughs> obvious. Uh, after last night, and it seemed like Jensen had the upper hand, I took him over Bjergsen, but I still think all three mid laners, like Bjergsen, Jensen, and uh, Caps, are all three very close. And I think uh, I want to echo that point as well, because like both Jensen and Bjergsen killed each other in that series last night. So they, they both really performed exceptionally well. And the only reason I feel that I couldn't put Caps there was just because of the lack of experience that he's had in terms of international competition. Bear in mind, he only joined the LCS last split, and this will be a massive opportunity for him to go against the other top dogs because he's already had uh, a, a lot of lessons from Perks, I feel, and now he's <laughs> going to get to learn from uh, two of the other superstar EU NA mids. That's Bearson. true. The only constant over the three rosters was Broxa in the jungle, and if we just recognize that as where he came from, not being in the LCS only for a couple of months in that team, he has grown tremendously. So why do you think he overshadows all of the other junglers in the tournament? Uh, I think like for the junglers in both NA and U Europe, actually, I think a lot of them are kind of evenly matched. But something when we play against Broxa that he does really well uh, compared to others, like his early game dominance is really good. He knows when to pressure, he knows how to play with his lanes. And I also think like something a lot of junglers don't do is like play around Vision, where he Sometimes if he knows he can't contest something, he will just stay in fuck. He will stay, uh, he will stay unknown. And then you have to like, you have to be aware and like uh, respect on other lanes as well, especially when you play side lane and stuff like that. I think that's what Fnatic does well and Broxa does well, especially. It'll be very interesting to see him up versus the competition. Sandcox, uh, no NA bottom lane support or AD carry in ours at least. And Azale did also tell me that he thought that Smoothie might have a one-up on Mithy in that regard, but I don't know if you guys have watched enough to say that. But why do you think not a double lift isn't in there, or Sneaky isn't in there, or whoever? So, uh, to me, like, I was going to put Smoothie in there, but then I watched his performance last night against TSM. They're the so of, damn yeah, because of that like the number of The number of times that he just randomly died, and the number of times he would try and get Vision alone, like, just raised a lot of question marks for me. And I felt like that his contribution in a lot of the fights was just less significant than that of Jez's in the way in which he just seems to better coordinate with the rest of his team. And I feel like that right now, um, to me, it's just a little skewed towards Fnatic because of how dominant that bottom lane has been when they're able to get their comfort picks in particular. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what Smoothie can bring, uh, but... Yes. Yeah, it's excited to see what everyone will bring, because obviously we're very much in this EU of bubble course. and we see it all from the EU perspective. And we're also quite cocky, like everyone on we Twitter are. and pro <laughs> players and we as well. Uh, what if we crash and burn? What is the chance that we're too much in this bubble, guys? I mean, you got to build up some hype. Definitely. Build up some banter. <laughs> yes, EU is the best, right? It's, That's the way it was. It's best of ones. Um, and uh, I talked to someone on Twitter about this. They were like, what do you think the actual chances of NAR? And I think that you always have to respect that individually, NA has like a ton of like really good talent. Like, but none of EU, them made no, 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 But like EU sure does, list. like, just because we think they're better doesn't mean that they outclass them so much that like Chachi's just going to smash impact, right? Like, I don't think the gap is that big. It's just in the ways in which we play around the map. I feel like the top teams in Europe right now have a really good understanding of macro in terms of controlling side lanes, vision, objective setup. And I just think that in NA, it's a lot more scrappy. There's a lot more fighting. There's a lot more action. And uh, I think we'll see less of that unless EU gets baited into it uh, by the playstyle of NA. Agreed, macro level seems to be higher in EU. 
like I think this has been mentioned a couple of times already, but like the Euro the European teams we have at the moment at the top, they have like this really distinct style where if you, if you haven't played against it, it's really you can really get caught caught off guard and like especially Fnatic and I guess unicorns as well. If you suddenly see them go five mid, but I guess they're used to that in NA too, so <laughs> I'm not really sure. But Fnatic like playing against the Kinnan with a uh, Shin popping popping in suddenly and like flashing on top of you and then you just instantly wipe all of you then like stuff like this is really hard to play against if you haven't already and I think that's that's what Fnatic has in their favor at least. We'll see what happens. A million dollar question, who's winning Rift Rivals? Eddie? Uh, who do I think will win? Mm. Uh, G2. Nice stalling technique. Who do I think will win? <laughs> Wonder? Uh, Fnatic for sure, I think. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about Fnatic as well. All right, two votes for Fnatic. They are the best in Europe right now, and it seems that you guys have trust in them in terms of Rift Rivals. Well, it's coming to you next uh, Wednesday from Berlin with the first game starting at 5 p.m. Central European Summertime. I was going to say, uh, I thought we were going to take a look at the schedule as well. Yeah, let's take a look. There we go. <laughs> because it starts off with TSM versus G2, which is such an awesome rivalry. It was so close in the end. We had that heroic expect moment at MSI. So there's going to be a lot of fire there. So do you think G2 has what it takes in their current form to kick it off with a win versus TSM? I mean, I think they obviously have a chance in any any single matchup. It's not like TSM is dominating NA right now either. No. So I think... Every single game that is at Rift Rivals, every team can take it off. It's fairly close. Super, Except super for every game versus Fnatic. Fnatic is going <laughs> to smash everybody, apparently. Well, I was looking forward yesterday when I was watching uh, Sneaky Play Tristana to C9 versus Fnatic. <laughs> I got a lot. Well, obviously, I probably have a lot of European people on Twitter. So a lot of them are, yeah, Reckless is going to smash him. And then some odd NA tweeters that were like, no, Sneaky's definitely going to smash him. You know how that goes on Twitter. You I'm know? really excited to see Double F play against the European teams. Because <laughs> I believe the last time we saw him was against you guys. And what happened Worlds. there? Oh, there's a Jin on side lane. Oh, there's an Elsa. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I'm, I want to see how well he will do against a lot of European teams, especially because I have not forgotten that he said that all the bottom lanes in Europe are trash, and I'm sure that some of them will have taken that personally. He did, in fact, say that in a recent interview. Recently? Yes, recently. I didn't catch but that one. He, uh, he does not have a high opinion of our European bottom lane, so I'm looking forward to oh, seeing yeah, yeah. what they can say. Uh, I can't answer to that. He's <laughs> back with the trash talk, but we I have some trash talk by Bjergsen. <laughs> oh! Well, we have some trash talk of our own. Perks, he had some choice words ahead of the competition, tweeting, I can't wait to clap retired EU mids. <laughs> <laughs> Any worth? Actually, when I read that the first Trashy's time, I thought it just said EU mids, but it's again, oh. so as to be able to keep himself nice again. and safe. We're Although somehow looking at Fnatic versus forward, the tunnel is out. That was a nice replay. <laughs> I really like that one. Just so if you were forgetting <laughs> that you lost Trashy. that series, here is it. Here is it. Trashy called on a Very wall. nice. Yeah. What is he doing? Riot production right here. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Get off my set. No. Uh, just kidding. But perks, I love it. Some fighting words. And it is a thing that kind of got him famous last year. And then he had to bite the dust with the whole G2 debacle. But I like it. He's throwing out some shade there. So is he strong enough, even if he's not on the strongest, to do well for Sold and Amids? Because he wasn't in the list either. I, th I think the reason he wasn't in the list for me is I took all the players that I feel like has had the most impact for the team and I feel like every single win C9 has pretty much had is mainly because of uh, Jensen. Mm -hmm. I think Perks can obviously go up against them. He was up against Faker and he did very well, but like it's hard to say. Like I don't know. I, th I think most mid laners at this tournament are fairly even. It I seems mean, they're like... all European, right? So, of course they are. So, uh, <laughs> no, <Seth> they're not. <laughs> Ryu came and played. I know mean, he played Nels K first. He he became well known here. That's what I'm making the argument for. But, well uh, known. No, no, it's also very Actually, wrong. he became well known on a YouTube video. That is the... very true. Uh, well, YouTube video that I imagine he wants everyone to forget about. So, <laughs> um, But I think that mid lane talent is just naturally stacked. So, a lot of fun mid lane matchups. And Hot Vice will probably be on Exile too to see how well he can perform. Definitely, and I like it because it is one of those tournaments that one person can definitely show up and step up. And Perks is the person that was able to do that most recently at MSI. So he'll probably have some green to want to do that again. So super, super exciting. Uh, and the best players in Europe, they continue to leave their mark on the summer split. And we're going to take a look at some LCS big plays of the week brought to you by Acer. First up, Broxa, he put on a strong performance against Splice with the Spider Queen Elise and at FNC Whistle used big words to describe the jungler's presence on the rift. Trashy's going to be spotted on the ward once again. Soaz should be able to keep himself nice and safe. Although he does start stepping a little far forward. The tunnel is out. Can he get the unburrow? And right to the body slam. There it goes. Wonder's got the damage, though. The barrel knocks him back as he rolls into the waiting arms of Broxa. And Trashy hopping right over. Oh. But given his life, it's first blood to Broxa. Damn, he just disappeared in the end. 
Did I miss the tweet? Balanced. <laughs> balanced. <laughs> balanced. <laughs> ah, at least balanced. Rex has balanced too. Well, those two together top, uh, it's pretty... I mean, at least with the Renekton or whatever top, you'd never get away. But in this case, wonder. How dare you? Know, How did you leave your jungle to yeah. die, Wanda? I mean, uh, I hear I hear the Rek'Sai sound, and then I'm like, okay, I guess we, we got a kill here. And then he, he just instantly dies, and I'm like, hmm, I guess uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's game one. That is game one. I don't think there's any more Fnatic Splice things going on. Uh, I hope. Let's see. Ignar, he, though, he picked up Rakan in game two versus H2K yesterday. And Misfits Gaming support, he pulled off a daring engage for our second replay. Uh, let's talk about it after because they actually go mid. Okay, Febavin. Can he get away from the entrance? Oh, but he's gonna jump into a far. He literally everything is missing. No, that you're alone. Done. He's got ignite available, but there's a cocoon onto Yankos. First blood picked up by Power of Evil. He flashes forward. Exhaust goes down. The light slinger passive gets a double kill. Yep, Power of Evil popping off there on Lucian, two kills, but they didn't win the game. No, they did not. One of the biggest gold throws of the split, maybe even of the year, was pretty significant. 8,000 gold. 8,000 gold. Impressive. Well, in the same game, Oduwamne, maybe that's to blame for it. He came up with a great quadra kill in the top lane at the through Dark Soul tweeted, This Camille is really working out for H2K. Oduwamne is popping off and getting to carry the team on his back. Popping off. Ah, they swept it. There you go, Power of Evil. Thank you. We got a little bit... Uh Late potentially. Oh, he's got Power of Evil. He's gonna dash away. Body slam connects. Oh, look at the flash into the barrel. There's no tower to fall back to though. Exhaust for exhaust in the culling. Power of Evil puts a lot of damage down. Almost wins in the 1v2. Max Law turns it around. Teleport comes out from Alfari. He's caught inside the baby cage. Getting burned and roasted and cut down by Odo Wamne. The Glacial Fisher prevents Max Law going in, but the entrance knocks up two. Alfari's not done. Now he is. Odo Wamne kills him. Hunt Summers caught. Out up with the uh, exhaust, puts the damage and the feathers out. Ash arrow into the face. Oh, he's gonna kill him. Summer goes down. Everybody's dying. Ignor gets tagged. H2K are acing misfits. Game from being so far down, it feels like everything he's been doing has just netted in multiple kills for the He's actually going 1v5. All right, GA is uh, not available to him. I think it's on cooldown. Shut down. <laughs> That's your I tell fault. you, your that fault. cast because it's Dude, legit. You threw that on him. You're praising Odo, his calls, his plays, and then he gives up the killing spree. Well then, we had to attach that. <laughs> because <laughs> Odo Amna is always very offended if we don't recognize how good he's done in the game. Well, you've done amazing, but you also did that. He had the backpack <laughs> and he just threw it off. But uh, yeah, impressive there nonetheless. Well, that'll be it for us, unless you guys have any big plays that we didn't highlight, that we didn't talk about that you guys did. Oh, we went 0-2, so there's no, no this no, week. <laughs> not, not, not this week. And you guys get a week off, actually, to watch and see a lot of the teams. So, And it'll be nice if you guys got any scrims lined up for Cine teams. Are you planning to do that? No, because we stole trash, you remember? No, we, we have scrims. We have scrims against Cine teams. All right, we will be using yeah. trash on the desk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but of course, there's other days where you'll be able to uh, yeah, scrim yeah, the yeah. teams as well. It'll be very exciting. Yeah. Scrum against our good old EU buddies, mm -hmm. Ryu, yep. Jensen, Bjergsen. Ryu. Something to learn. Well, good luck. Enjoy your week off slash scrimming. Vedius, thank you for very much for joining us as well after a long day. And for us, it is time to call it a night here in week five. Thank you guys very much for watching. And we'll be back next week as the best teams from Europe and North America hit the Rift for a great standoff. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you at Rift Rivals. You want to throw your faith behind the mysterious monkeys. They've already taken down ninjas. <laughs> Why not Samurai 2? Now expect us to play it the safe way without a ward. Amazing on the way in, expect there's no tools to escape. He may just get knocked down here. That's the kill over to Kickass. The Callista still hitting the Baron. She can just smite it up. They oh are going to get it. She too. What that should be impossible. Expect coming right back in the fight. Amazing. Desperate to get something, but you're just feeding kills. That's the Quadra. The dissonance. Oh, not going to be enough. That's it. A long, slow goodbye for Cause Q. Yeah. Back up, back up. And then. Nice, nice, nice. I go vote. Kiggis is going. Kiggis is like, okay, I made it. Mission Impossible, oh. folks. Mission Impossible. Play the music. Dun, 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 oh. dun. <laughs> I mean, it's not enough that the Mysterious Monkeys will turn it back around. 2 0. G2 take it in the end. May not have been clean, but it's the wins that count. And G2 are going to close it out.
Let's see whether or not Shook will be contesting the unicorns of love. And Xerxes gets caught out. The flourish roots him down. Flash death sentence into the box and That's play. The jungler dead. Not enough damage though as Hiku gets a double. Looking for a triple with the grenades. Finds his man. Samix is the one that's tagged. Oh. He's stunned. Prophet's looking for the kill. He gets it. Before Exile gets a kill. Prophet goes under the tower and Xerxes is able to escape. Now Prophet's down. That's a double for Exile. Prophet puts down the Dominus. He will get shut down by Visit Chachi. Unicorns are looking for the ace. Rocket grab onto Nagne. Lining up the death sentence for Samad. Oh! He predicts it! Sprottle, you beauty! Instead, Nagne is the target. Oh, why are you there? And the minions are taking down the Nexus. The unicorns of love want the ace. They want to send a message. And the unicorns defeat the ninjas.